everybody. Greg Peters here reporting from the Miata and I got something cool to show you guys today. What you're looking at right here is an NB gauge cluster, fully fitted, fully plug and play, and fully functional, including but not limited to NA6 oil pressure gauge, fully functioning speedometer with no factory speed sensors on board because of the transmission swap. We got lights, we got camera, we got action. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this and a lot more in today's video. So sit back and enjoy the ride. So why the heck would you want to put an NB cluster into an NA anyways? I mean, the fact that the NB cluster is just beautiful is only a matter of opinion. But I mean, come on, look at this digital odometer. No more ugly rolly boy. But the best reason to have an NB cluster is the electronic speedometer. But what makes that so special? I'm getting there, Craig. Keep your pants on. So the NA uses a mechanical speed sensor. This sensor goes into the transmission. And there's a little gear inside there that spins this gear, and this gear spins a speedometer cable. And in the NAs, that cable runs from the transmission all the way to the back of the cluster, and then the speedometer gives a certain value based on how fast that cable is spinning. Now, anyone that's owned an NA knows about that god-awful squeak that the speedometer cable inevitably starts making, particularly in the winter. <laughs> And along with that squeak usually comes a speedometer that does something like And that's annoying. And anyone with a boosted NA in particular may have noticed that if you do a really hard pull, the speedometer suffers from lag. And I never noticed this for years of having a turbo NA until I went to the drag strip. And when I would pass the traps, the speedometer would read like 75 miles an hour, but my trap speed was 87. But my speedometer on the freeway was accurate. So what would happen is if the car accelerates quick enough, the speedometer cannot keep up with how quickly the cable is accelerating. Now with an electronic speedometer, this is all eliminated. And I know you're thinking, well, those things really aren't big deals to me. But if you're like me and you've done some kind of drivetrain swap to the Miata, you have no speedometer at all. So I'm going to show you how to remedy that situation as well. But first, let's take a quick look at all the differences between an NA and an NB cluster. So you've got a couple hurdles to get over when doing this conversion. First, let's talk about the gauges themselves. Luckily, the fuel gauge, coolant temperature gauge, and the tachometer all function the same exact way in both clusters. The speedometer is electronic with the NB, and on the NA, it's mechanical. So on the back of the cluster with the NA, you've got this little port to hook up the speedometer cable, and the NB cluster does not have that. And that's directly related to the odometer because the odometer uses the same signal as the speedometer. So if you get the speedometer working, the odometer will work as well. All right, so even though the speedometer to me is the most important part of this swap, the trickiest part is going to be the oil pressure gauge. Now, I could just swap out my early oil pressure sensor for the one that came with the VVT engine, and I've got the dummy oil pressure gauge that's equipped on all Miatas 1995 through 2005 that basically tells you either you have no oil pressure or you have at least a little bit of oil pressure. But after reading up on this swap, it does seem like a bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna give that my best shot in this video as well. Next comes getting the NA car to talk to the NB cluster. And the main issue with that is the NB cluster uses different plugs from the NA. But that's why I have these NB pigtails. I'm actually going to be repinning the NA harness into these NB plugs to where when I'm done, the NA chassis will just plug into this thing and everything will work. And the last thing is physically getting this cluster to fit into the NA. Now it's very close and there are some modifications you have to make to get it to fit, but you'll see how to do that in just a second. So getting the speedometer to work on the NB cluster is going to be more or less complicated depending on your specific setup. If you have an NA, which is using a factory five speed or factory six speed transmission, all you have to do 
is install the NB speed sensor, run two wires up to the dash and pin them into the cluster. But if you don't have a factory transmission, it still might be really easy. If you've got ABS on your car, you can just take two wires to the ABS sensor and run those to this nifty Dakota digital conversion box. And then you can pin this out to the NB cluster, calibrate it using the uh, internal calibration of this box. And then you've got a fully functioning electronic speedometer in an NA. Now, if you don't have ABS, you can swap one of your hubs to an ABS hub and add an ABS ring to one of your factory axles. Okay, but I'm running out of options here because I have a non-factory transmission. I have no ABS. I have non-factory axles, which I cannot just throw an ABS ring on. So what the heck do I do? And that's where this stuff comes in. I've got a trigger wheel, which I'm gonna be putting on the drive shaft. This is a Hall Effect sensor, which senses every time a tooth passes it. And that's gonna generate my signal, which I can send to the conversion box, which I can send to the cluster. And I can also send to the ECU. My standalone ECU will then be able to do boost by gear and help me get off the line to smoke those Mustangs even harder. Now I know I just talked about a lot of stuff which may be foreign to you, but that's okay. This video is just getting started. I suggest you watch the rest of this video and then check out that link in the description, which I will have diagrams for every single scenario that I can possibly think of for why you might wanna be doing this conversion. I can't believe I almost forgot about the most important difference of all. There's no way I could live without my beautiful RevLimiter Revolver gauge faces. But lucky for me, Adam at RevLimiter got wind that I was doing this conversion and this box showed up in my mail. That's a custom set of revolvers for the NB cluster. Okay, there's two boxes in here. Adam's the bomb, seriously. If you guys come, I mean, come on. Revlimiter.net, improve your driving experience with a set of gauge faces. You will not regret it. This tack has the same Mazda logo as my center caps for my wheels that he made for me. And not only that, it's got the 7,800 RPM limiter, which is exactly what my limiter is on my motor. And of course, the 180 mile per hour speedometer. You're gonna make me do a six speed swap. Another thing Adam graciously sent me from his collection here is an odometer with mileage that actually closely matched the mileage on my chassis. And as someone with mild OCD, I'm very appreciative of this because right now, every time I drive the Miata, I track the exact miles via GPS and I input that data into a spreadsheet so I can keep track of the mileage on the chassis and the engine. And now with a working odometer, I won't need to do that anymore. Okay, let's jump into the Miata and finally get a working speedometer, shall we? So here we are at the NA dash and it's got four of these little clips here that the cluster screws into. So I'm just gonna drop this thing into place. So the top tabs are actually pretty much right on the money. The bottom tabs are really close to lining up, but it's getting held up by these triangular support tabs on the back, which don't line up with those slots right there. Well, not the prettiest thing I've ever done, but no one's ever gonna see it. Uh, I guess except for 100,000 people. So now the biggest thing is that those alignment pegs don't line up. Not all the holes line up, this one does. There it is with the gauge hood on. Oh my God. I haven't even done anything hard yet and I'm already stoked on this swap. So the hood fully fits, didn't require any modification. Look at that, NB cluster and an NA. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is pin the NA harness into the NB plugs. So you can see here the NA has two main plugs for the cluster, but the NB cluster has three ports to plug into. And that math doesn't really line up, so. That's where these come in. What I've gotta do is unpin the NA plugs and put those wires into the NB plugs in the correct slots. Now I'm not gonna go wire by wire and color by color in the video, but for the people who are actually doing this, I'll have all these diagrams linked down below. All right, I've identified the first pin I'm gonna switch over and that would be the temperature gauge. 
That's this purple and white one right here. So first I gotta open up the plug. And just basically get this little door open here. And once you have the door open, there's just these little pegs holding each pin in. To get that pin out, you'll just need a tool like this. And I'm just gonna push that peg down. Now I'm pulling on the wire at the same time that I'm doing this. And then it'll just pop out. And then when you get your pin from the NA harness, you just push it in until you feel the click and then close your little door and you're done. So now I'm gonna de-pin pretty much everything, use my color charts here, and hopefully this thing works when I plug it back in. As far as all these charts and diagrams and whatnot, all the information is here, but it's a little bit confusing, especially if this is like your first wiring project. I'm gonna redesign one of these to be really easy to read and use and put that in the link below. One of the best things you can possibly do for projects like this, label your diagram and the plugs you're working with so you know exactly what you're looking at at all times, exactly which side of the plug, what number pin, and get it right the first time, which I hope I'm gonna do today. Scared? Me? I mean, uh, <clears throat> I'm not scared if you're not scared. We're in this together. All right, one thing I'm glad I realized kind of early. So the tachometer signal is coming from the left side, but it's gonna end up in the right side plug for the NB. So before pinning this in, I'm gonna run this wire behind and have it actually come out the right side. It's still gonna be a pretty tight fit. I might have to extend some of these. I don't know, I guess I'll figure it out as I go here. Just got my speedometer pinned in, but of course there's no signal in the NA for a speedometer. So it's just a tip and I'm gonna hook that up later. All right, so it looks like a bit of a mess, but it's actually coming along quite nicely. All right, well now I've got two wires for the speedometer. According to the diagram, they're both just called speed sensor, but uh, yeah, obviously I'll, I'll get that figured out and address that later. I guess what time it is. It's the same time I always finish everything complete darkness. I have almost everything pinned up and plugged in. The only thing I have left is an unswitched 12 volt source. So the trip meter remembers the mileage that it's on, not the odometer, but the trip meter. And as much as I could care less about the trip meter, I promised you guys a fully functional NB cluster. So I'll figure out how to get that hooked up tomorrow. But right now I wanna see if um, basically anything works here. So let's check it out. All right, so the lights work. That's a good start. Key on, all right, we got battery light, brake light, and flashing airbag light, which of course, because I have airbags deleted, but we'll uh, handle that when I do the gauge faces. It says I have oil pressure, which I'm not surprised. I'm gonna be really pumped if the tack works. Oh my God, it works. Oh, oh. Fuel gauge is working also. That's rad, all right. I'd say we're, this is pretty successful so far. Wanna check a couple more things real quick. Blinkers? Oh, what about high beams? Oh my God, it's a success. Temp gauge, it's getting pretty late, so I don't wanna warm this thing up right next to the neighbor's house. I'll get that figured out tomorrow. I'll see you guys in about two seconds. All right, day two, we now have the NB cluster as functional as it can be using just the wiring from the NA harness. With the exception of the oil pressure gauge, it's time to go a little bit deeper. We have to get the trip meter function working. We have to get the speedometer working, the oil pressure gauge, and then do the gauge faces. So uh, yeah, let's get to work. All right, so for the trip meter to remember its value after the car's been shut off, you need what's called an unswitched 12 volt source. It's basically a fancy way of saying something that works without the key. So you can, you know, if you have an NA, you can flip your headlights up, you can turn your headlights on. There are a bunch of different places from the car you can pull that. Now, if you're taking on any kind of project like this, you gotta have one of these. If you don't have one of these by now, what are you doing? You do not need any sort of top of the line multimeter. Get yourself one of these things so you can vary when you hook up pin 1F to a constant 12 volt, you can check, you can see no key here. And just go ahead and ground this. And we have our unswitched 12 volt. People are always asking me, well, what wire do I use for this and that? Don't trust some random guy on the internet to tell you to use the white wire. Get yourself one of these and verify it for yourself. Now, what I've got 
rigged up over here is uh, what I believe to be the correct wiring for the Hall Effect sensor, but I wanna get this tested out before I deal with all the mounting and all that stuff. I've got my sensor here and I've got my test rig here. So we're gonna see if I can make the speedometer do something now. It's alive, it's alive! The speedometer works. Well, almost. I mean, functionally it works. It just needs some calibration and some fixings and uh, <laughs> we're freaking golden, dude. Okay, first time the speedometer has moved in like two years. I'm pumped, okay? Mostly just so I can put polls on my Instagram story and you can see like how fast the car accelerates. That's, that's literally it. Now, let's see if the trip meter holds its point two. Ooh. Isn't it great when things just work the way they're supposed to? All right, so if you're doing a trigger wheel setup like mine, your wiring will be exactly the same. But if you are just doing an NB cluster swap and you have a stock vehicle speed sensor, your pinout might be a little bit different. Just as a quick overview, from right to left, you have power, that's gonna be 12 volt switched power from the car. You have ground, that's just grounding this unit. So you can tap into any ground. And I also have the yellow wire, which comes from the cluster. That would be pin 1M, that's the factory vehicle speed sensor ground. So those both go into the one labeled ground here. Sensor ground is the ground for your Hall Effect sensor. Signal in is the signal wire from your Hall Effect sensor going to the box. Sensor power is the box providing power to the sensor so it's able to generate a signal. And then I am using out one to pin 2M on the cluster. And that's what's gonna vary based on what kind of speed sensor you're using. You might use out two, three, four, or five. Now you can figure all that out, which one you need to use based on the instruction manual that comes with the conversion box. And this box will pretty much just live behind the cluster. I'll just find room somewhere to put it. I'm gonna leave it exposed for now because I still have to take the car out and drive it and calibrate the speedometer. But before I do that, I'm gonna install my rev limiter gauge faces and do the oil pressure sensor conversion. All right, we got the indoor workshop set up. It'd be nice to get out of that blistering hot car for a few minutes. All right, so in the interest of not uploading duplicate content, if you want to know exactly how to install the rev limiter gauge faces, you can use my install video as well as the very good and clear instructions uploaded by Adam at RevLimiter. Both of those resources will be linked below. I will say if you watch my video, it was on an NA gauge cluster. The NB gauge cluster is a tiny bit different, so you should definitely supplement with those RevLimiter instructions. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into this thing. Doing one pull on E85 be like. All right, we're down to the bare bones cluster here and it's time for the scary part of attempting to swap in the NA oil pressure gauge. Now I found a really good tutorial on this by uh, Miata.net user Centurion. This guy's like a gauge swap wizard. I found info about the speedometer and stuff as well. And uh, I'll go ahead and link this down below in the description so you can follow along with this. The only thing I will say is his tutorial shows you how to put the NA gauge face onto an NB oil pressure lighting plate. So I won't be doing that since I have the NB specific oil pressure face. So the modification's a little bit different if you're gonna run the NB oil pressure gauge face. If you go to put this face on here, the screws just barely don't line up. So I'm gonna have to modify this just ever so slightly in order to get this to thread on. 
I got a little bit of an issue. The rev limiter gauge face is a little bit thicker than stock and uses, if you can see, an extra little rubber washer. And the problem now is there's like no threads left, which would be fine if I was using the factory oil gauge, but now that I've got this drilled out, hacked up NA gauge, it doesn't, it doesn't hold at all. So fully mount up this gauge face and drop a tiny bit of super glue through the back and uh, hope for the best. Just gonna go ahead and let that masterpiece dry for a while. What have I gotten myself into here? I just wanna reiterate that you don't have to get yourself into this mess just to run an NB cluster in your NA, but for the few people out there that have a drivetrain swap, are going for 100% functionality with the oil pressure sensor and doing rev limiter gauge faces, you know I'm gonna go the extra mile for you guys. All right, the next step here, I'm gonna do a little bit different from the write-up. You can see that the oil pressure sensor from the NA is thicker and it's interfering with some of the plastics. So some of that stuff has to get cut out. Now, in the write-up, they say you gotta remove the entire backing from the cluster, and they show why, because there are some sensitive electronics underneath those two main bulges there. But I'm going to attempt to very carefully cut out just what needs to be cut out, knowing what it looks like under there based off the pictures. <laughs> You ever played that game, Operation? Unfortunately, the bezel ring does actually contact the face of the gauge and it actually lifts up the bezel around the speedometer. All right, now the last step to getting the oil pressure gauge into this cluster is wiring it up. And of course the NA and NB mount differently and are wired differently. So we have to do a little bit of custom wiring to get this to work. It's really not that difficult. You can see the studs on the back of the NA oil pressure gauge are all labeled with power, ground, and signal. And the factory wiring points for the NB gauge, there's power or ignition, ground, and the oil pressure signal. All right, it's time to make the world's cutest little wiring harness. In order to do that, you're gonna need three M3 threaded nuts, some little tiny washers, three short strands of wire, three miniature ring terminals, and some little M3 nuts and bolts. Next, you need to strip both ends of the wires in a pretty specific way. Now, the ring terminals are gonna live behind the oil pressure gauge, and there is like no room back there. So I'm gonna make these even smaller by cutting off the insulation. I'm gonna take the long stripped end of this wire, do a loop around your screwdriver, even it up like that. And now you've got a little wire loop. And the wire loop is gonna be the end that goes onto the gauge. You'll just use a nut and washer on there. It's complicated sounding until you break it down into individual steps. And that, my boys, is what Car Passion is all about. If you are gonna use one color wire, it is a great idea to mark which one is which, which is positive, negative, and signal. Now we'll drop the tiny screws through those holes, which will hook up the gauge to the board on the back of the cluster. For each one, just drop your screw in like that, and then the screw will go through the appropriate hole. I'll take these out to give myself a little more working room. And since I'm replacing the odometer anyways, I'm gonna take that out now as well to give me even more room. Now that the most tedious task of this whole job is done, let me get this cluster reassembled. Mm -hmm. 
So normally the next step would be setting the needles on the cluster, but I still need to get a speed signal from the drive shaft to the cluster itself. So I've got these parts that I've already tested with the drill. I know it's all gonna work, but I have to install them in the car for real. I uh, got the wrong size. That's okay, I can just order a new one and wait another week, right? That's fine, I can, I can wait a week. So the last thing to do here is to make a little bracket for the Hall Effect sensor to sit in. It ain't pretty, but it's gonna work. You can see how this is gonna work on one of my little test transmissions here. So I wanted it to bolt to the transmission itself because yeah, it could be mounted to the car, but the transmission does move under load and you don't want this sensor to be able to move away from the trigger wheel at all. So if it's bolted to the transmission, if it does have any flex with those stock transmission mounts, then it should maintain the correct distance to the trigger wheel. There we go. So it's bolted to the transmission mount there. And that way, if the transmission does move up and down a little bit, it's still gonna maintain that perfect distance to that trigger wheel. Of course, I have my gauge needles, which I'll be setting shortly. We got GoPros. That is a fully functional oil pressure gauge in an NB gauge cluster. Warm the car up all the way and set my coolant temp to the center. And I also just filled up the fuel tank, so I can put this on. Now I'm afraid if I try to set the speedometer needle, it's gonna to try to go to some crazy negative value and possibly damage it. I don't really know how that works. So I'm going to just GPS a location and see how far it shows up on the trip meter compared to where it actually is. So it says it's 5.2 miles away. All right, so my 5.2 mile trip on the odometer shows up as 13.1 miles, which basically means if I did a zero to 60 pull with the needle installed right now, it would look like I did zero to 150 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds. Now, as much as I wanna flex my car, I don't wanna lie to you guys. So I'm out here, I'm gonna get the perfect calibration on the speedometer. Obviously we got a bit of a problem because it still shows them going 120 when I'm going 40 and the speedometer is very bouncy, which might mean the sensor is not close enough to the trigger wheel, but I'm gonna try to reset the calibration on the uh, conversion box again. Well, the good news is, is the waviness was being caused by the distance of the sensor away from the trigger wheel. All right, so one thing I wanna add here is, even though I fixed the speedometer for the most part, in pretty much every clip, you'll see that it's still got a little bit of jumpiness to it. And I think that's just because the drive shaft itself has got a little bit too much flex for this type of setup. So what I ended up having to do is get a different size trigger wheel and actually put it back on the differential, on, on the flange itself, where there cannot be any flex. And I made a little short bracket in the same manner that I made this one, but it's just a setup that works a lot better and cleaner, and now the speedometer is butter smooth. The bad part is that I have the Dakota Digital Box calibrated at the lowest value, the lowest possible limit, and the speedometer is still reading way too high. But yeah, learning process. Okay, after messing with settings and wiring on this thing for about two hours, I finally figured out what I was doing wrong. I'm going to partially blame the instructions on this one. So I know from Centurion's testing that he did that it needs to take in an AC signal or a sine wave signal. And you would think from this diagram, you'd use out one to put in a calibrated AC signal because it's gonna require some calibration. I have a totally custom trigger wheel set up and everything, but the unit could not calibrate the pulses per mile low enough. The speedometer just kept reading way too high. So what I did was try to use output three, which looking at this diagram, you would think is a fixed 4,000 
pulse per mile signal. But where it does not say in this whole instruction manual, this can still be calibrated. So now I'm using output three to the cluster, which is calibratable, and now I should actually be able to set up my speedometer. So for anyone who's actually doing this exact setup, you can DM me or hopefully this video will answer your questions about this stuff. to complete the awesomeness, the last thing is to hook the signal wire directly from the Hall Effect sensor up to the options port of Megasquirt. It's already got a recommended pin for a vehicle speed sensor, that's pin L, digital frequency input two. So you just gotta unplug your options port, open up the plug itself, we're gonna pin this one in, and then we're gonna just hook this directly up to the sensor output wire, and it's as simple as that. And then here, let's mess with some settings in Tuner Studio and get this thing working. Digital signal, digital in two is the pin that we're on. This thing is roughly 48,000. It's um, just gotta figure out how many times your tire rotates in one mile, multiply that by your diff ratio, multiply that by how many teeth are on your trigger wheel. And I can also set up gear detection. So it's a 323 diff. This is the one right here for all your BMW gear ratios. All right, I've added a gigantic gear indicator and speedometer, and I'm gonna go test drive the car as if I'm gonna get this right on the first try, which I probably won't, but hey, learning experience, right? Oh yeah, and the last thing you have to set is your wheel diameter. I believe the gear indicator uses that. the tuning capabilities that have just been unlocked with this mod oh my god it works oh, I'm pumped now That wasn't so bad, right? Now, this was the most advanced electronics project that I've done on this car to date. And I'm really excited that I actually got everything working. You know, making these videos actually kind of forces me to not fake it because I have to pretty much prove in the video that I got everything working. And I want to actually do it properly. So if anyone is doing any one of these mods, this video will legitimately be able to help them. And of course, along with that, I'm gonna mention it once again, down below in the description, the link to my website, all the info that I researched and, and you know, discovered what instructions didn't make sense and tried to make this as easy as possible for you to do. Now, if I had to do this a second time, it would be very easy now that I figured all this stuff out. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I am glad to be able to post poles and driving and whatnot with a fully functional speedometer now. And yeah, the uh, the project is ever evolving. So if you did learn something, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.
We're just out here. We're just out here getting some groceries in the grocery getter. We're loaded up. <laughs> 